So we are continuing our series of videos on blood pressure. And in previous videos, I've talked about the three elements. So heart rate, stroke volume, and peripheral resistance and how that impacts our cardiac output. I've also talked about baroreceptors, those things that measure and evaluate the, the amount of stretch and recoil in our vessels and help our body to retain the blood pressure. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. One of my favorites because it's such a complex and beautiful system. I can't wait to get into it. Let's head to the board. Welcome back, my name is Tammy and this is Nurse Minder and on this channel we do everything nursing. So if you're new here, consider subscribing below so that you get the next video when it's released. Now our second compensatory system is the renin angiotensin aldosterone system or in short, ROS system. But this one, unlike the baroreceptors that gets its start in the cardiac system right off the aortic arch there, this one actually gets its start in the kidneys. Now the kidneys also require a certain amount of fluid or pressure in order to do their job. Now this information, the heart and the kidneys, will become important when we talk about beta-1 blockers, but for now we're going to talk about the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Okay, so we're going to build this system out slowly so as not to overwhelm you with how busy this board is going to get. Now I mentioned that the renin angiotensin aldosterone system gets its start in the kidneys. And there's two places in particular that are monitoring for changes in pressure, so that stretch in those arteries, and changes in salt. So one part is the afferent arterioles, they're bringing the blood into the glomerulus. They have these juxtagal, juxtagal, juxtaglomerular cells that are lining the afferent arterioles and their sole purpose is to measure the pressure so stretch of the arteries which is related to water and the sodium concentration in the distal convoluted tubules so that's the second place in the kidneys where we have juxtaglomerular cells monitoring for salt concentration both of those locations can signal for a release of renin. So the juxtaglomerular cells are the ones that are responsible for synthesizing and maintaining, synthesizing and storing renin. And then of course, when it's required, releasing it. So as you can see, renin is the first step and that's why it's called renin. Now we're gonna talk about how we get angiotensin. Okay, so right now we have just come from a decrease in pressure or salt noticed in the kidneys, and that juxtaglomerular cells have been triggered to release renin. Renin is now in the bloodstream where it will meet up with angiotensinogen. Now, angiotensinogen is produced by the liver. This is a multi-organ system, it's fascinating. The liver produces angiotensinogen. This is in an, an inactive hormone but when renin meets up with it, it actually cleaves is the word. It puts it into a different state and it's called angiotensin 1. Now this is still not at its final state, so it is still an inactive hormone in this stage. All right guys, now I know this is a lot of information coming at you, so if you're learning something already and you're enjoying this, give it a thumbs up. And we're going to get into the rest of that system right after this, so just take a big breath Let's dive in. Angiotensin 1 then travels to the lungs where it is then transformed into angiotensin 2. So the way that I remember the different organs and how they're involved is I know that renin is where it starts, so that's the kidney. I know that the liver, there's one liver, so that's going to give me angiotensinogen that meets up with renin and becomes angiotensin 1. I have two lungs and this is where that, that chemical change occurs to give me angiotensin 2. So activation of angiotensin 1 occurs in the lungs where there's another coenzyme in the capillary beds and that converts it to angiotensin 2. Now angiotensin 2 is what does the work. This is the workhorse. So we're going to look at that next. Now when angiotensin 2 
hits its target cells, it's going to cause vasoconstriction. That's really important because this is what's going to narrow those arteries and it's going to increase blood flow back into the afferent arteries, arterioles that are traveling to the kidneys, which will stop this process because now the juxtaglomerular cells have identified we have increased pressure and so there's no need to release renin. Okay, so that takes care of the renin and the angiotensin. Where does the aldosterone come in? Well, we know aldosterone is part of the kidney, so we're gonna take a look at that next. Okay, so we know angiotensin II will cause vasoconstriction. It's known as a very powerful vasoconstrictor. And that's great, it's gonna increase my blood pressure. But there's more to this. Angiotensin II also affects the adrenal gland. So that's the little hat on top of the kidney. But in particular, it's going to go straight to the cortex. Now, the cortex has three different hormones. It can secrete different classifications. And so one is mineral corticoids, the second is glucocorticoids, and the third is androgens. In this case, we are focusing on mineral corticoids. This is where aldosterone is produced. Okay, so... We've covered a lot of ground and we're almost done. When aldosterone is released, it actually works on the kidney itself. So it's meant to increase sodium and water retention in the kidney. Now I know it's not mentioned here, but there's one more thing that's happening and that's in the brain. It has what's called osmoreceptors. and it's gonna release anti-diuretic hormone, anti-against diuresis, losing urine. And so this will also help to further increase the volume of our blood. We have covered a lot in this video. We've journeyed from the kidney, in the bloodstream, meeting up with the angiotensinogen that's produced by the liver, converting it into angiotensin one along the route to the lungs, where it's then in, converted into angiotensin two, which then goes back to the kidney and has an effect and also stimulates the release of aldosterone from the cortex. And the brain's been involved in this little gig as well, secreting ADH, antidiuretic hormone. That is a lot of people working to keep our blood pressure in the normal, healthy range. So you can imagine that if there's a breakdown at any one of these places, there's gonna be trouble. And we're gonna talk about some of those treatment methods in upcoming videos. Until next time, make it a great day.